how do we bend a three-point saddle in conduit? All right, so three-point saddle is something that you're gonna use um, when you've got a round object. It doesn't even have to be round, it can be a square object, but it really, a lot of times we have conduit that's up on a wall. And if we're running across here, we need to hop over it. It's not wide enough that we need to do a four-point saddle and traverse a distance over the object. We just need to come and hop over it. So first thing that you're gonna do is to figure out where the object is, you're always gonna wanna measure to the center of that object. So say we've got a conduit here that's like coming across and we need to figure out uh, where the center of this object is. So like, let's just do an arbitrary thing. Um, say that we're at, let's say that that's 57. I can kind of fudge it right now to make the numbers pretty. Then we're gonna mark that. So say 57 is our center. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw I'm gonna twist this thing and draw all the way around. I'm gonna do that for all three of these actually, just to make it kind of easy. Now we have to do a, a little bit of shrinkage calculation. So if this conduit, because we're bending so much, as we bend, we're stretching the conduit. So there's actually gonna be a little bit of shrinkage that we need to account for. So the first inch of an object, you need to do a quarter inch of shrinkage. If it's a two inch object, then you do a quarter inch plus a quarter inch. So each inch is a quarter inch of shrinkage. So I'm gonna add a half inch to whatever my distance is. I have a two inch object, so I'm gonna come over four inches and uh, I'm gonna add that half inch, add you know the, the quarter inch for the first inch and a quarter inch for the second inch of object height that I'm trying to clear. So what that looks like is just for, for the sake of Seeing it, I'm just gonna like draw a little line right there. That's four and a half inches. So that covers our distance, four inches for the first one inch of object, plus a half inch for the shrinkage. The second one inch of this two inch object, we have to go six inches. So we're gonna add to that line, we're gonna add six inches of distance. So that gives us 10 and a half inches, right? 10 and a half from one line to the other. All we're gonna do is add another 10 and a half. We'll go 10 and a half inches out the other way from our center, because we wanna match this on both sides. Boom, there we go. Now we can kind of just cancel that one and don't worry about it. And you can look and see that this line has the equal spacing from end to end. I'm gonna twist this. Okay. Now I've got three lines that go all the way around. Now, it's really important when you're doing this, don't use a Sharpie. Don't be a beginner and make a rookie mistake and then have permanent lines on your conduit. You always wanna use a pencil. I'm just doing this in marker because for the video, it's easier for you to see what I'm drawing. But uh, with a pencil, it allows you to actually rub that off. I can't get this off if I try to rub with a Sharpie. A Sharpie. Little pro tip though, you could take and draw Sharpie over Sharpie and then Sharpie will take Sharpie off. That's kind of a cool pro tip, right? But anyways, just use pencil when you're out in the field. It makes it a lot easier. Now, I wanna give a big shout out to Pen Aluminum. Thank you so much, Pen, for sending me all of this aluminum conduit and for sponsoring this video. Um, so the benefits of working with aluminum conduit, A, it's way lighter, so like you wouldn't believe how much like a big stack of conduit that you can lift up when it's aluminum. It's so much lighter, um, a lot easier to bend too. So like if you're used to bending like one inch, inch and quarter inch and a half conduit, um, be, uh, being able to bend aluminum versus like really like struggling with steel. Um, so the benefit, you know, is obviously it's lighter, but, but being able to bend it is such a huge thing. There's even this coating that they can put on the inside of the conduit that's called blue lightning. It's sort of like a Teflon coating, um, but it essentially it makes pulling a lot easier on the inside of conduit. A lot of times when you're using aluminum conduit, it, it kind of catches more than the steel does. So it's a little bit more difficult to pull wire through sometimes, but with a coating like this, it comes through with a breeze. And the cost of aluminum versus the cost of steel, you're always gonna pay less with aluminum than you are with steel. So just kind of across the board, it makes sense to be using aluminum conduit. If you're interested in finding out more about pen aluminum or looking into their aluminum conduit, check the link in the description below. All right, so we've got our three bends. Now the bending of this is the tricky part. You kind of have to rely on your bender for this. 
If you look at this bender, this bender has got this little star in the middle. That star points to a notch, which is directly in line with the center of this uh, handle. We don't want to use that one. We want to go forward and use this teardrop. Some people have a trick where like you bend a piece of pipe and you draw an arbitrary line on it and make sure you get the center of a 22 inch bend. I don't do that. I just use this notch because it's close enough. It's probably right actually like right in front of that where the center is, but I just use the notch because it still produces a, a good quality, you know, bend and it's still um, like almost dang near the, the, the middle of this 22. So what we're gonna do is line up our center line with the drip, little teardrop right there. And I'm actually looking at the teardrop. I'm not looking at the notch. The teardrop points on the same axis as our line. And then I'm gonna look right here. I've got a 22 and a half and a 10. 22 and a half degrees worth of bend and 10 degrees worth of bend. The first bend in the center here, we're gonna do 22 and a half, and then the other two we're gonna do at 10. Really should be like 11 and a quarter, right? Any, if we're doing one at 22 and a half and each half bend beyond that should be 11 and a quarter, because that's half a 22 and a half. But the 10 is close enough. Again, this stuff with a three point, you just have to kind of eyeball it. So I'm gonna take this. I'm not bending from way back here and pulling down on it because then I'm gonna warp my conduit. I'm pulling right close to the shoe. So I wanna get right behind the shoe. I'm just gonna push down a little bit, add my body weight to it. You can see it start to bend. You don't wanna bend too much. And I, what I like about this Klein bender is it's got them on both sides. Most of these benders do. But we're looking for 22 and a half. Look at it head on. 22 and a half goes down a little bit, so it's, it's not quite there. Just a little, little tiny bit. All right, and if you look at it, we've got 22 and a half. That looks pretty parallel to that bottom line of this conduit right there. So that's our 22 and a half. Then we can look at our line. Is our line actually in the center of that bend? Pretty darn close to it. It's a little, I mean, it might be off to the right a little bit. That's kind of why I was saying, if you mark it just out in front of that teardrop, it's a little bit more accurate. But again, this, I mean, this is so dang close that I'm not worried about it at all. So from that first bend that we just had, where we were on the teardrop, all we're gonna do is slide our conduit forward. So it takes that angle and pushes it out in front of us. And now we're gonna use this arrow. So we wanna line our second mark with the arrow, but we wanna twist this conduit 180 degrees. So we need to make sure we're lined up with the arrow, make sure that we are at uh, center, that we're not dog-legged off to one side. That looks pretty close to center. If you're dog-legged out like that, you don't want to bend it. You want to make sure it's coming up straight with that pipe. So to me, that looks pretty darn accurate. I usually try to take the line from the handle of the bender and go all the way up with the conduit and then look through to the other side to make sure kind of go over the top and you can see if you're perpendicular. Again, it takes a little bit of eyeballing, but once we're on our arrow, now we're gonna bend down to 10. So this is even less than before by half. So just barely kick it. That line looks level with the bottom of the conduit. All right, so that's our first bend. Again, we are using the arrow for that, not the drip. Drip's only for the middle one. Now on this one, we're gonna use the same thing. We just need to flip the conduit around so we're gonna flip it around 180 degrees. We didn't move our bender. Our bender's still facing the same direction it was a minute ago. Now we're gonna line up with the arrow again. And if your conduit is facing down, you're facing the wrong way. You wanna flip it up 180 degrees. And you can think logically when you look at this. If this first bend is facing up, you don't wanna bend up again, you wanna bend down. We're doing opposite bends on every one of these. So I always usually just look at my first one to make sure the first one bends down, second one needs to bend down. So just make sure when you're looking at all of these, you don't get confused. A lot of people do. A lot of people start looking at them and like, oh crap, am I supposed to bend it up or down? Dang it. But you should kind of have a U shape when you're bending your third bend. So if it makes a U, you know your third bend's in the right place. If it makes like an A, <laughs> this is not right. This is not so good. All right, so I'm gonna try to take, make sure that I'm not dog leg. That looks pretty straight to me on my mark. And we're gonna do the tens again, just a little bit. 
could be a little bit more. Let me just double check. I can look down it. Yeah, I can see by looking it down it that this conduit goes down and the end is going up. So if I just keep bending this back, I need to get this parallel with the other side. So it just makes a solid line. And yeah, that 10 is kind of lower and that's exactly why that's happening. So just a hair more. Mm, that looks better. Heck yeah, if you look straight down that, that looks like a straight line from my hand right here all the way down that conduit. That looks like it's straight. So now, next thing we do is just take it out, go down to our object, and boom, right there. Yep, we'll strap that in, strap that in. It's perfectly straight. We don't have any gaps over here. We don't have any gaps over here. We don't have one end flaring up over there or one flaring up over there. So that's how you cross that object. And that's pretty tight to it. So you can see if we wouldn't have taken that, that shrinkage into account, it would have been so much tighter that we probably would have had a little bit of a gap. So you do always want to figure out if anything, just go a little bit more. You can go more than a quarter inch per inch um, of rise in your shrinkage, but this general rule per inch. And again, if you're doing like a three inch, four inch object, you're not gonna use a three point saddle. You could, it just gets more complex. Most of the times that we're doing stuff, like I tend to stick three inch or less for a three point saddle and I'll do um, anything above that. I usually just do a four point saddle. So that is your three point saddle. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.